With this lecture, we begin our study of Chapter 5, which deals with cardinality of sets. In Section 5.1, we talk about what are known as equivalent sets and finite sets. The first several parts of our lectures will deal exclusively with equivalent sets, and later we'll talk about finite sets. In this lecture, we give the fundamental definition, which tells us when we can say that two sets have the same cardinality. So the idea here is that we like to compare sets as to their size um, in the sense of the number of elements in them. And we're going to find that when we're dealing with sets having only finitely many elements, our intuition is generally correct. It leads us to correct results, but we're going to find that some of the results involving infinite sets um, in terms of number of elements um, lead to results that are counterintuitive. So for that reason, when uh, we talk about cardinality of sets, we really need to use very precise definitions. And so here is the fundamental definition which tells us when we can say that sets have the same cardinality. If we give ourselves two sets A and B, we say that they're equivalent, A is equivalent to B, and we write this using this notation. If the following is true, there exists an f such that f is a function from A to B and it's a bijection. We say that A is equivalent to B if there exists a bijection from A to B. So this is to replace the informal e expression that A and B have the same number of elements. So when we say A and B have the same number of elements, we mean A is equivalent to B in the sense of this definition here. Um, the correct expression to use is A and B have the same cardinality. Um, the expression that A is equivalent to B is just something that our textbook uses. Um, think of it more as a temporary definition. The, the more correct definition is to say that A and B have the same cardinality. We don't typically use the expression A and B have the same number of elements um, because that can lead us astray when we're dealing with infinite sets. So here's a simple example. Consider A to be this set here. It consists of the um, real numbers minus 5, pi, 2.3, and square root of 2. And B is the set consisting of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Do they have the same cardinality? Well, yes, they do have the same cardinality. Intuitively, it's because they both have exactly four elements. But let's use the precise working definition um, to explain why that's the case. We just simply have to produce a bijection from A to B. And I think it's pretty clear that if we map minus 5 to 1, pi to 2, 2.3 to 3, and root 2 to 4, that that really is a, a bijection. It's 1 to 1 and it's on to and therefore, by definition, these two sets have the same cardinality. And here's another example. Take A to be the set consisting of 3, 7, and 5, and B is the set consisting of 15 and 20. Again, we ask the question, do they have the same cardinality? So it's pretty clear that our intuition tells us, no, they do not have the same cardinality. Intuitively, it's because A has three elements and B has only two elements. Um, so they don't have the same number of elements. But that's just the intuitive definition. The real definition would be you have to argue that it's impossible for there to be a bijection from A to B. And I guess it's pretty clear that you can find a surjection from A to B, right? I can map 3 to 15. 7 to 20, and 5 to whatever I like, say 15. So that's certainly a surge action, but clearly it's not an injection. It's not one-to-one. -one. So it's the injective part uh, that breaks down here. So a formal proof, I haven't given the entire proof, but this is a proof with a gap in it. We certainly, it's, it's certainly true that there cannot be an injection from A to B. Uh, I'm not going to fill in the details of why there cannot be, but the idea is 3 has to go somewhere, 
uh, either 15 or 20, so you could say, okay, suppose it goes to 15, um, then one of these two either maps to 15, in which case we've got two different elements mapping to 15, or um, both of them map to 20, in which case, again, we have two different elements mapping to the same thing. So it's pretty clear that you can't get an injection, and therefore you cannot get a bijection. Um, I'm not going to write the details of that proof down. So these two examples seem pretty trivial to us. Um, they illustrate that when you're dealing with finite sets, your intuition about cardinality um, works pretty well. But starting in the next lecture, we'll see a few examples that indicate that uh, when we're dealing with cardinality of infinite sets, the results that in, turn out to be true uh, are sometimes counterintuitive.